Courtney Kupitz. Mark told you about her in the opening of the program. She's a fantastic story because uh, she was the world champion on the uneven bars in 2002 and really on a roll and it was so unlucky that she tore her Achilles at the world championships. How do, how do you do that? Uh, just a, a funny landing? Uh... She's a very powerful tumbler and when she was taking off on one of her tumbling moves, literally she just snapped the Achilles uh. tendon. So she went right away to have surgery. What amazes me is I saw her the day after the, it happened, and she was already back in good spirits, very positive, and I think mm. that's part of the reason why she's coming back so quickly. Wow. Hard to believe less than six months ago she had a torn Achilles tendon, and yet she's doing combinations like that on the beam. I think it's great for her to be back out there. Even if she's not doing her full difficulty, it's important for her to show herself and say, look, you know, don't forget about me. I'm still vying for a spot. Mm -hmm. Which leg is it? Do, uh, do we know? I don't remember. It's I'm hard to tell. Sure. You know, that's a great thing when you can't tell that's which true. leg the in <laughs> Right. Which that's leg a good sign. Injured. Her coach, Kelly Hill, said she's, all the flexibility is back. Most of the strength is back, and she's doing some tumbling and some vaulting, but very light on the landings and uh, not overstressing this because this is a critical time right now and in Kelly, her preparation. And Kelly Hill is so good about rehabilitating injuries. She's had so many amazing athletes and really knows how to take her time, get the athletes back, but do it in a safe manner. A nice, easy dismount to land. Courtney Coupets finishing her first performance of the evening here on the balance beam. A lot of athletic heritage in that family. Her father was a college football player, her mom a cheerleader, so uh, I'm sure they've rehabbed a few injuries in their day too. And she's got to feel great just to be back out there competing again. Well, there are the home team favorite, the Parquettes of Allentown, Pennsylvania, and Kimberly Lowe about to begin her exercise on the uneven parallel bars. And I should mention, Kimberly Lowe actually used to be a dynamo. She used to train at the gym that I was training at. A spectacular athlete, and uh, moving to Parquettes, I think, has done her um, a, a great world of good. I mean, she seems very happy here, and her gymnastics is looking very good. There's a couple of things to watch for. Judges are looking for the gymnast to do transfers from the low bar to the high bar and the high bar back down to the low bar. They're looking for a flight element or a release move, essentially. They're looking for some moves, individual moves on the low bar. Some are rather complex. We'll try to point them out as we go. And, of course, the dismount is always critical in, uh, in all of gymnastics. If the gymnast fulfills all these special requirements, they have a routine that can score. 8, 8. In order to get up to a perfect 10, they have to do difficult combinations like this here. Full pirouette, half pirouette, shoot to the low bar. You can, oh, that's unfortunate. And that's one of those skills that it feels like you're either on or you're off. There's no middle ground, and it's a very difficult skill to do, but because the bars are so wide these days, everyone has to do that skill. Not a lot of difficulty in that routine, so she was unlucky there on that transitional move. Kimberly Lowe for the Parquettes. Shannon, elaborate some. You said you either have it or you don't some days. It's one of those timing moves. It's just all about your angle and your timing. And so she's shooting up for that high bar, and she was just off. Will we turn the spotlight on Corey Hartung out of Hills in Maryland, the state of Maryland. 11 teams here at the Parquette Invitational. With Shannon Miller, she has a nice pedigree coming in. Yeah, Balance Beam was one of my favorite events. This is Corey's favorite event as well. She was actually 18th in the all around at last year's national championships. So she is in the hunt this year to make that Olympic team. You can tell right away that she has beautiful line and presentation. And you're gonna see a lot of moves 
like that where you have to connect each skill. So if you see a, a large pause or a wobble in between two skills, that's going to be a major deduction because not only are they going to get a deduction for the wobble, they're also going to get less value for the skill that they're doing. Nice flexibility. Mm. Oh. That's one of those combinations you mentioned, Shannon, she was going for. Right, and because she fell, now she's going to actually lose the value of the skill, uh, which is very difficult. The code, of course, changes every four years, and they raise the bar every four years. Simple question, how wide is the beam? Of course, four inches. <laughs> Some days I'll bet it feels like two and a half inches. <laughs> and Sometimes it does, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. And that's a great skill. That's an aerial, except it's sideways, or I guess long ways kind of on the beam. Fantastic. I love when you get to see unusual skills. Because of the code, a lot of times you end up seeing the same skills over and over. Mm. It's two and a half twist to end. Boy, I think she has terrific potential. Corey Hartung, who works out of uh, Maryland, one of three teams from Maryland here. And here's a look back at uh, a slip that could cost her. And here's just a great skill. Nobody does this. Wow. And she's just a little bit off. That's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't try it. <laughs> wouldn't try it on the mat, would you? <laughs> Yeah, oh, Shannon's the Olympic champion on the beam, and she won't even yeah. try it. That's you know what, sitting up here in this comfy chair, it's all right. You get used to it, don't you? <laughs> Tia Orlando will not participate in tonight's event because of an injury, but she remains Parkhead's best chance, perhaps, to make the Olympic team. Let's take a look at this superstar in the making. At 15, Tia Orlando is already one of the top women gymnasts in the United States. She's been training with the Parquet since she was 10, but long before that, knew exactly where she was headed. When I was two, like I remember saying I wish I was like a world-class gymnast, and now when people say it to me, it feels so good inside that I know I worked this hard to get here, and it's finally paying off. 2001 was her breakthrough year. Tia tested and qualified among the elite. That's when she knew she belonged with the best in her sport. Yeah, I mean, I was a little nervous for that meet because I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know what to expect. But as soon as I got out there, I felt right at home with everybody. It was great. Since then, Tia Orlando has competed in the Goodwill Games in Australia the Pan American Games in Santa Domingo, and the U.S. Nationals, where she has proven herself time and again. Still, she says, it hasn't quite sunk in that this is an Olympic year. Not really. I mean, we keep talking about it, like, only five more months till trials. But I don't know. It's not going to sink in until I'm there. But I just can't wait for it. She has a tender ankle right now, so she's recently limited her floor exercise practice. But Parquet's co-director Donna Strauss says that's the event where she could shine at the Olympics. Yeah, she's a very strong tumbler, probably one of the strongest tumblers in the world, not just the United States. This past summer, she competed in the Pan American Games and won the gold medal on floor exercise. And her, her tumbling, she is doing skills that other gymnasts are not doing and doing them extremely well. So as long as she continues to be healthy and have that strong confidence level, she could be a, a contender for the Olympic team, and we're hoping also a medalist at the Olympic Games. This is a swing year in her career. And for Tia Orlando and the rest of the ladies, they point towards the month of June and the Olympics. That month is a little crazy, but it's about working now to get to that month. Like, we have to work our butts off now, and hopefully it will pay off in June. Back to the vault and the powerful Parquets team, and Christina Kosha gets set at her first run towards the vaulting table. A little protection on the wrists there, Shannon, for uh, impact on the table. Yeah, they call those, well, at least they did in, in my day. That sounds so old. <laughs> but uh, tiger paws, and you wear those to protect your wrists um, on the floor from the pounding on vault. Nice 
nice half on to Yurchenko, half turn onto the horse, and then Pike tap off. Very soft landing as well for Christina Kozia. Pushes half and back, Pike off. It's one of those vaults he's really attempting to try to make it all the way to a full twist on, but a lot of gymnasts don't quite make the full turn before they do the backflip off, so hopefully she'll make it around a little farther this time. That was a little better. That, that was, time. yeah, that was a lot better. It's more three quarters of the way around, and the judges can be pretty strict on that, making sure that they're definitely.